But you want to know what I think about everybody else? Do you want to know that? I think they're beautiful. I think they're fearfully and wonderfully made. I think that they've all been given special giftings and talents. And I think they themselves are beautiful, um, important gifts and talents to this world. I think that they ought to walk with their heads, heads held high, their shoulders back, uh, keeping that crown on their head <laughs> as they walk through their days. I think that they're so intelligent, so so skilled in everything, everything that they attempt to do, and they don't even realize it. I think they're too they're too critical and harsh on themselves and there's this thing about comparison they always compare this, themselves to other people and they're like oh but she has this and oh he has this and, and how am I going to get that and it's really not about what another person has I think it's about people coming together and sharing those gifts I think <laughs> I love each and every single person that God created because he loves them and and if we have the same father, <laughs> they're my siblings. We're all adjacent. <laughs> so, yes, I think that each and every person has a divine purpose. That they are, I think, so much more highly of them than they actually think of themselves. And you know a person doesn't think highly of themselves when they're constantly feeling a need to attack or tear people down. But it's important in those situations that you don't get offended because it's really just showing you the heart of that person. Like, they don't even know who they are. That's why they're so worried about you. They don't realize who they are. They don't look in the mirror and see that every single detail in their face or their bone structure or their skin or um, all of their features were carefully crafted and, and that someone, God, spent a lot of time putting them together, developing them, wanting a relationship with them, and then he sent them here for a purpose. They don't, they don't realize that. Man, if people knew who they were, nobody would compare themselves to anybody Nobody, and honestly, it's none of your business what somebody else thinks about you because it really is. The only thing that matters is what God thinks about you. But there would be none of this if people would just look in the mirror and see the beauty of what God created them to be. Oh, my God. that That is just, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, it's so amazing. I'm glad I finally woke up because I spent, let's see, I'm 19 now. I spent let's say like 12, 10 or 12 years, not knowing that, not realizing that, and being trapped in those same webs that other people were trapped in. <laughs> you, you really have to go past um, social media and societal standards and all these other things. And your worth is never based off of what another person rate you to be or how they treat you or any of that I think they're all so precious don't you they're all precious they're all gifts from God they are they're so beautiful and there's such a variety of people I love that like when there's so many people who, who look different I can appreciate the beauty of what God made in each individual person. And I like when people are different from me. I think each and every person is different. People um, oftentimes try to cling to this this oneness somewhere. They're like, okay, your skin is closest to mine, or you dress cl most closely to me, or you shop at these stores, or, um, or you have this amount of money, or whatever. They're looking for people who they think are just like them, but really, when you come down to the realization that there's no such thing as race except for the human race and everything else is an ethnicity and that all of these other social constructs don't actually hold any weight in the kingdom of God and you understand that what we all have in common is we're all created by God. That's it. We're all on the same playing field. You know, in, that, in Genesis where it said, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, 
earth take dominion and have authority over all these of, over the beasts of the field and all the things that creep and crawl and over principalities and all that it never said that you could have dominion and authority over another person don't you don't you get that so that's to say that we are all on the same playing field it really is just a matter of okay have you walked into that authority and that dominion or not not everybody has and that's why some people may see me as like I'm up here or I think that and and they feel like they're down here but it's it's really have you walked into your dominion or authority you can give somebody a gift but that doesn't mean that they're going to unwrap it or ever use it some people just keep their gifts in the bags and, and they think, well, maybe one day I'll open it or other people even dispose of gifts. They, they think that they're not going to like something. They didn't even open it up to see what it's all about and, and they just toss the gift or they re-gift things. They think, okay, I'll, I'll just give, it, give my gift to somebody else and they don't even realize that's what they're doing when they don't walk into those roles. No, no, I don't think I'm better than anybody else. I don't think that. I don't act that way. But because I, I look different, people assume that. I don't know. I think I'm beautiful, and I think you are too. And I think the entire world is beautiful. And I believe that everything under the sun was created by God and every good and perfect thing comes from above. So if you are from above, then you are a good and perfect thing, a good and perfect gift that God has given. And I think we all ought to act that way. Act like we know um, the person to your right or to your left or above you or below you in whatever uh, way that can be interpreted is just like you in the sense that they have everything that God died for if they so choose to receive it. They have that stuff too, but they don't realize it. It doesn't matter that you look different or you dress different or, or you get this grade on the test or, or you're not, you don't feel particularly um, skilled or gifted in one area and you see that somebody else is or there's varying degrees of being gifted in things. It, none of that stuff actually matters. Don't you get it? Wake up. <laughs> When you see me, when I walk past you, there shouldn't be an intimidation there. Except <laughs> the Lord said in Deuteronomy that you put the dread of me and the fear of me on all flesh and all men. <laughs> but the thing is, it, it shouldn't be like, you know, she must be so important. So I'm just going to um, try to find fault in her or be intimidated. But even the word of God says that men always try to find fault in you. They, they always do because they can't conceive of somebody just having this kind of grace or this kind of favor on their life. But what you don't realize is I have so much more grace for other people. I have even more for other people than I do for myself. That's the truth. I'm so much more about putting somebody else out in front. I've never running for that front spot in anything although he does call me out so many times i care more that somebody else knows who they are and they realize that they realize that too because what i have now it's so much it's so much more than what i used to have i, I i'm telling you i was a very very broken very ashamed very um insecure person and god he just came and he removed all of that this you know, you ever heard that saying, like, it takes one to know one? Yeah, I know that you're this because I was that too before. <laughs> That's how I know. That's how I can recognize it. And I won't put up with it. If I come around, I'm, if I, I said in one of my videos that if I, if something is highlighted to me by God or whatever in another person, I'm not going to withhold that. Okay, and same token that if if I'm on the receiving end of something like that, you, you take those things humbly. You don't let them go to your head or cause you to think oh, you're um, more highly than you actually are or that you're above another person because that's not scriptural. And that is pride. And as you know, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. So, so there should be none of that. 
in your in your walk, in your presentation, in your dialogue with other people. There should be none of that. But you need to know that you are loved by God, that I love you as a person, as a being. I can't look at somebody knowing, having head knowledge and heart knowledge, that they were created in the image of God and say I hate that person because that's to say you hate something that God created. And how could you say that? How could you say you love God but you hate something that God created? You may not like what they do, you may not like what they say, but you can never say you hate a person. That's to say you you hate in a very indirect way, but it, it's to say you hate God almost. That's why he said, whoever says he loves me and he hates his brother, he lied. Why? Because that person is made in the image of God. So if you say you hate someone who's made in the image of God, then you hate God. That's what that scripture is all about. Come on now, people. <laughs> oh my gosh, be nice. Stop being so catty and so judgmental. Oh, <laughs> none of that stuff matters. No, oh, stop it. It's ridiculous. You should not be like that. If you like her shoes, go get up and go tell her that you like her shoes. <laughs> if you think that She's really blessed in art or music or uh, computer science or math or, or anything. Go and tell that person. There's so much hate, judgment, and criticism in the world. When you see something good about somebody else, you need to go and tell them. Immediately. Don't wait. Because you might miss your opportunity to bless someone. And people always say, well, you know, no one ever does this for me. Why would I do this for them if, if they're not doing it for me? But what you don't realize is the very thing that you crave, if you're willing to get out of your comfort zone, get out of yourself and all of your personal reservations about a person or about something, and you go and you start blessing people with your tongue, the things that you say about other people, and you go and you show love, that you're, all of that is going to be reciprocated. You're going to get the benefit, the harvest of all of that coming right back to you. What you're doing when you do that is you're planting seeds into each and every person's life. You have no idea how much words can affect a person. Somebody could have been on the verge of, you know, just ending their life. Unfortunately, that's what's happening a lot in this time. And for you to just go up to a person and say, hi, how is your day going? Um, how are you? I really like this about you. You could save someone's life. You could save their life by doing that. You know, I went through that period, like I said, and recently I, I'm on this thing, like you always, I always go around and I'm like, hi, good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> when I go out and it's just, like you acknowledge other people who were created by God, right? And... I could hear some people saying within themselves, um, wow, you know, she she really said hi to me. Or she, and I'm thinking like, why wouldn't I? <laughs> You're a person. You know? But it's, it's just those things. So I'm right now removing under the anointing of God, breaking the yokes. I have the breaker's anointing. I'm removing the burdens right now. Any of those areas where you felt like you were inadequate or you you were um, bound by insecurity or you felt timid or shy in an area and you didn't want to step out. You felt like there was this big wall in between who you want to be and who you actually are at this point. I'm just breaking that right now in the name of Jesus with the breaker's anointing that he's placed on my life. The breaker's anointing that has been released to me. It's broken off of your life right now. Do you believe that? 
yeah good and now this this was not in vain so you actually have to do the work after this you have to change you have to make a point to to recognize who you are first there's a reason why the bible says to love others as yourself because if you don't love yourself then you can't love anybody else but there's there's supposed to be an equivalence there you, you recognize and acknowledge that a person is at the same level as you. That's why you would love them as you love yourself. You put them at the same level of importance as you. That's how you love your neighbor as yourself. You have to be thinking, okay, this is my neighbor. They're, they're just like me. You know, they're, they're made in the image of God. They're just like me. Would I want someone to do this to me? Would I want someone to say this to me? For whether it's a negative thing or a positive thing. Would I want somebody to be nice to me this way? Would I want somebody to do this for me? Just think about those things as you go about your day. I have this, um, I always talk about this, but I have this post-it card on my door. And right before I go out, I read this. It says, it is written, and it's strategically placed here. Because as soon as you, you could be in your prayer closet, in your place of solitude with God, and then as soon as you come out, somebody is right there, literally outside your door, um, conversing about you or doing stuff like that. Or um, the enemy's got somebody on the path that you're going to go on that day who's just going to try to get you out of your Christ-like character. So I need a reminder right before I go out so my mind does not forget these things. <laughs> but it says, first and foremost... Um, it is possible to quote love and that word love there is translated to agape in the Greek and it means like this this unconditional love no matter what a person does you still have love for them but it, as then it says your enemies and I put in parentheses my and then underneath that I always say I hear you Lord because I want to incline my ears to hear what the Lord is saying at all times and then under that I have in quotations I will love my enemies, do good to those who hate me, bless those who curse me, and pray for those who spitefully use me." End quote. And then I have another one that says, I will do unto others as I want them to do to me. And then another quote underneath that that says, I will not condemn or judge unrighteously. As believers, we are called to judge. We are called to judge. We're just not called to judge unrighteously. And we need to know that with the same manner that we judge, we will also be judged. And also, you have to have looked, took an inward look of all the things that are going on in your life, who you are in Christ. Are there any blind spots in your life or areas where you fall short or miss the mark that would hinder you from judging righteously um, the character of another person or what they're doing? Is there anything like that in your life? Anything that would cloud your vision in that area? So we are called to judge, it's just we're called to judge righteously, but first to take an inward look and see if we even qualify to look at another person's situation and speak about it or pray about it. And lastly on this card, I have that I will forgive everyone and give freely. Need those principles. <laughs> I need to be thinking, when I walk out of this door, when I um, enter into the world again and come out of my little my little um, sanctuary here, I'm going to love them anyway. I have to already have that mindset. I am going to listen to what the Lord is saying. I will love my enemies and I will do good to those who hate me. I will bless those who curse me. I will pray for those who spitefully use me. I will do unto others as I want them to do unto me because they are at the same level that I am. Don't you get it? I will not. I, I come against and bind that judgmental spirit. I will forgive and I will give freely. I need that every single day. All right, guys. I'm just going to end here. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May his countenance be upon you and give you peace. In the mighty name of Yeshua Mashiach. Amen.